Hello, and welcome to Our Devotions, where together we're developing lives with God at the center. I'm Daniel, this is my amazing wife, Amanda. Hello, today we're gonna to be talking about are we letting the enemy in? Talking about fear and self-harm. So grab your Bible and get ready to dive right in with us. So I was thinking about a message that Pastor did um, where he was talking about letting the, the enemy in and then thinking about just the times right now. Yeah. As we look around, it's Halloween and there's so much that goes around right there. But fear is a, is a real thing. Fear is a huge issue for so many people. And we prayed for some people yesterday, but uh, my life was impacted by fear. I didn't really realize to what degree uh, for a long time, but so many people end up crippled by fear. Yeah, absolutely. I think Romans, where you're at there, says that we don't want to be a slave. Yeah, it says, for you did not, it's 815, for you did not receive the spirit of slavery to fall back into fear. And in 2 Timothy chapter 1, verse 7, it says that God has not given us a spirit of fear, yep. but of power, power, love, and a sound mind. Yeah. And I want to encourage people that to be intentional right now, so many people are opening up the door for the devil yeah. and don't recognize that when you open up a door and something comes in, you let it in. And yeah. now it's going to wreak havoc. And a lot of people are like, well, but I only meant to let it in for the night. Yeah. I only meant to let it in for... Uh, that, that this movie, this thing, but when we're intentionally letting in fear, we can get ourselves a lot more than what we bargained for. Yeah. Well, I'm thinking about the devil. Like he doesn't wait for us to ask permission. He just waits for there to be a crack. Mm -hmm. <laughs> and he sneaks in. The Bible talks about how deceptive he is and he's the father of lies. You know, someone like that is not want, waiting for you to want him. He's waiting to see how he can weasel his way in. Absolutely. First Peter chapter five, Verse 8 says that your enemy, the devil, goes around like a roaring lion seeking whom he may devour. But just before that, it says, be sober-minded and watchful. Yes. And this idea that we've got to be careful and we've got to watch to yeah. make sure that we don't open up a door or leave a place for the enemy to attack. And so even today, as you look and you go, hey, what things are we going to participate in? What things are we not going to participate in? I encourage you to be sober and to be watchful. Yeah. And to watch and go, hey, I am not going to give the enemy a foothold in our life. And I know that for me, uh, I didn't even recognize how it got in, but I've discovered that fear had found its place in my life and it was stopping me from the call of yeah. God in my life. Like I had a, a fear of speaking in front of people. If you can imagine now. <laughs> but that's like what God has put me on earth for. Like he, like, he, yeah. he put this this calling on my life, but this fear was there to try to rob me of that call. Right. And there, this is so common that the devil uses fear to rob us of what God's called us to do. Yeah. And I remember having my brother-in-law pray for me and being set free. There wasn't sparks flying, there wasn't yeah. fancy moments, but in my life, everything changed. And the next time I was gonna try to talk in front of a group, everything changed. Yeah. It went from being a gut-wrenching fear to being like, oh, this is something new, little yeah. butterflies, but totally different. But I wanted to, to mention this, and we could just talk about fear and people who've been set free from fear for oodles of time, <laughs> but I also wanted to mention self-harm because I've talked to more people than I can count yeah. who were dealing with worry and anxiety and depression and somewhere in this mix, they got into self-harm. And they thought, hey, this is just a way to cope with what I'm going through. Yeah. They just thought, hey, this is a way to numb the pain or this is a way to feel something when I'm numb. Yeah. Their, their reasons vary. But what's, what seemed to be really consistent was they had a level of, of depression. They had a level of anxiety. And they cut in particular cutting, there's different types of self-harm, but it happens, I see it the most with cutting. And they start cutting to try to deal with it and everything exponentially explodes and they find themselves suicidal. Yeah. And it happens really fast, but there's this moment where they don't, there's like, hey, 
this moment I was distracted, this moment, and then within the next day or two, there's this severe escalation. Yeah. And they're like, I, but they don't connect the dots yeah. so frequently. But when you look throughout the Bible, you find uh, in Mark chapter 5, there's a, demo- a man filled with demons who would run around cutting himself with stones. Yeah. And in 1 Kings chapter 18, there's all these prophets of Baal. And as they would worship and pray to Baal, said they cried aloud and cut themselves after their custom. So d- demonic worship frequently included, part of their demonic custom yeah. was cutting themselves. And people don't realize, they're like, well, that's not why I'm cutting myself. Yeah. But when they do that, it is an open door for the enemy. That is part of demonic worship. And he comes in with it and he escalates things and it's not good. It's yeah. not helpful. Well, I feel like a lot of people recognize when they're self-harming, they want to stop and you can't. That's when you recognize you're not in control. You have opened yourself up to the demonic. The <clears throat> demonic is influencing you in a way to make this something that isn't easy to overcome. It becomes like an addiction. Yeah, and the thief comes to kill, steal, and destroy. He goes around like a roaring lion seeking whom, he, whom he may devour. But I love in First Peter chapter five, it, it goes on and says to resist him. Yes. And so I want to pray for those who say, hey, I want to be free. You know, and if there's an area, and if you even want to spread this, share this with somebody, who you're like, hey, they're struggling here and they're dealing with this. The Bible says that he sent his word and he healed them yes. and delivered them from their destruction. <clears throat> I want to pray for those that want to be set free from a spirit of fear or a suicidal depression, um, especially if there's been cutting involved. Um, I want to break the hold yeah. that the enemy has. So God, I thank you for each person who's joining us. God, that there is freedom found in you. I command fear and anxiety, worry, depression, self-harm, and a death the spirit of death to leave now Jesus. in Jesus' name. I speak peace and yes. healing over them. God, a revelation of you, your love and your acceptance. I speak yes. peace and I command those spirits to go in now. Jesus' name. I command, I speak for eyes that would be open so they can yes. see what they're doing and the effects that it has, the, th- the doors that it opens. And that they could keep away from those activities and those doors would stay closed. I speak freedom. Yes. He who the sun sets free is free indeed. I speak freedom over them in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. Well, let's get into our confessions and confess God's yeah. word over us. And remember that if those thoughts come back, if you start having those depressive thoughts, those suicidal thoughts, those self-harm thoughts, you have the same power that raised Christ from the dead living in you if you are a Christian. So you can rebuke it in Jesus' name and replace yes. those thoughts with the word of God. Yes. All right, let's repeat these. I don't have a spirit of fear. I don't have a spirit of fear. But of power, love, and a sound mind. But of power, love, and a sound mind. The same power. The same power. That raised Christ from the dead. That raised Christ from the dead. Lives in me. Lives in me. No weapon formed against me shall prosper. No weapon formed against me shall prosper. I resist the devil. I resist the devil. And he flees from me. And he flees from me. I choose prayer instead of fear. I choose prayer instead of fear. I am strong and courageous. I am strong and courageous. Fear has no place here. Fear has no place here. God is with me. For God is with me. I put God first. I put God first. And He takes care of me. He takes care of me. Greater is He who is in me. Greater is He who is in me. Than He who is in the world. Than He who is in the world. No evil shall befall me. No evil shall befall me. Nor shall any plague come near my dwelling. Nor shall any plague come near my dwelling. For God shall give His angels charge over me. For God shall give His angels charge over me. To keep me in all of my ways. To keep me in all of my ways. I cast my cares on God. I cast my cares on God. I fix my eyes on God. I I fix my eyes on God. And He fills me with His peace. He fills me with His peace. God, I thank you for your peace that surpasses understanding. God, that it would fill each person. God, that this joining us. God, that fear has to leave. That peace can replace it. God, that we could know you. That we could cast our cares on you. That we could let them go and place our hope and our trust in you. That we could fix our eyes on you and have that perfect peace. God, and I thank you that your love and acceptance would replace these, these lies of the enemy, these lies and this desire for self-harm, but God, that we would be filled with love and encouragement and hope. In Jesus' name, amen. Amen. We hope that this encouraged you today. If it did, could you help us out by hitting like, share, and subscribe? 
and we want to invite you to get into God's Word for yourself to discover who He is and what He has for you. Be blessed. We'll see you again soon.